Hi, I'm Jesse Coleman, Airware's Director of Business Development and Regulatory Affairs. And I'm here today with Emmanuel, the CEO of Redbird, one of the leading UAV and data services companies in Europe. Welcome, Emmanuel. It's great to have you here today. Hi, TC. Thank you. So I figured we'd just jump right into it. Um, people are really interested to know what is it that you guys are doing with UAV technology and what types of industries are you serving? So, so yes, uh, Redbird is a company that is specialized in collecting the data acquired by UAVs, either fixed-wing or retiring UAVs, and processing that data to extract the KPIs that are required for specific industries. So we mainly work in two big industries. The first one is um, construction, mining, and quarries. And the second big market we are targeting is infrastructure networks, like railways, roads, power lines, and pipelines. Can you talk to us a little bit about how quarries are using UAV information and what specific insights are they getting from the data you're providing them? So the biggest cost for quarries, it's fuel. And we have to ensure that fuel consumption is as low as possible. By using the drone data processing we developed, we are able to identify the best way to design a site to ensure the, the lowest fuel consumption possible. And this leads to huge savings for quarry operators. And what about the safety aspects? Because there's still that, that piece as well. So you know, there are, are issues where there is parts of the quarries or mines that can cave in. And what type of information can drones provide that help protect people's lives at these sites? So you use a robot instead of a human, and it, it will automatically increase the safety at all. But in addition to that, you can use the data you collect to study the compliance of the site with the good safety procedures by using drone data, we, we look at the width of the benches, we look at the berms and the, the safety blocks that are on every road, and we ensure through data processing that the site is fully compliant with the good safety rules. What were they doing before they were using drone information and how frequently did they have to do that? Well, in fact, it's surprising, but before drone and before data processing, the inspector in quarries couldn't check this information about safety blocks or the width of benches. Another really interesting application is the use of drones for long-range inspections for things like power lines and rail lines. Specifically with rail lines, how are railroad operators using drone information today and what value does it bring to their business? Railway, uh, for us, is one of the most major market for drones. We've been working mostly with the French railway company, SNCF, to monitor and to identify the vegetation that is growing uh, along the railways. And thanks to the drone and the analytics we provide, we can optimize the maintenance of the vegetation around the railway. And this is the first cost for a railway company. And is it the same, same type of information they're using when they're looking at power line information? Are they looking for vegetation getting too close? And what are some of the additional pieces of information you're extracting from power line surveys? Obviously, vegetation is a very important parameter to detect. But some companies and some industries, they will require other information such as change de detection, leak detection, potential danger around the infrastructure, or even erosion. You guys have been doing work now for several years in France, and I think a lot of that is, is because of the forward-thinking regulations that we've seen in France. Can you talk a little bit about why these regulations in France have helped you grow so much, and what we're seeing happen in Europe today versus what we're seeing in the United States? France is a very interesting and maybe a unique case in the new AV industry. We were not the first country to allow um, UAV to fly, but we were one, one of the very first countries to allow beyond line of sight operation. And thanks to this very adapted and well-suited regulation, we were able to test all the different use cases, whether it is for mining, or for agriculture, network inspection, structure inspection. And we were able to test so many, so many use cases that today France is a country with the most important number of registered drone operators. We have more than 1,500 drone operators in France, which is a lot. The European situation is similar with countries like UK, Sweden, or maybe Germany, that also have a very dynamic UAV industry. And we see now UAV regulation being harmonized in Europe. And it's a, it's a big challenge to harmonize all these different regulations. The situation in the US is different with more constraints, and it's still very hard to operate UAVs in the US. It's a big issue because the regulation creates the market. Thanks to the regulation, I was able to create the company with my co-founder, and I was to create a 30 people business that is now running. So I think it's urgent for the US and the FAA 
to finalize the regulation to allow people to fly UAVs and this will create jobs, technologies, it will save lives and improve productivity for many clients. Do you see regulations in the United States as they evolve? You see a lot of these companies now being able to invest heavily and really to develop their own drone programs beyond kind of the experimentation they're doing today. This is an amazing situation. In France and in Europe, the UAV market is quite open with many drone manufacturers, service providers and clients. And in, in Europe, we have been able to test all the different use cases. In the US, the absence of a regulation didn't allow the use case to be validated by clients. So in the US, many companies are developing technologies, but they cannot really validate it on the ground with clients. When the regulation will open in the US, all these technologies that have been developed will be validated. And I think the US will catch up very quickly versus Europe. Can you talk to a little bit about your interests in the US market? Will they kind of mirror what you're doing in France? Or do you see unique opportunities in the United States? Obviously, we have a huge interest in the, the US market. It will be the biggest market for drones and drone services very soon. What we want to do very, very quickly is to expand the company in the US. Uh, we are in the process of setting up an office here with a team and we will raise funds as well in the US with many uh, brilliant and professional investors here. Emmanuel, thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, Emmanuel from Redbird.